Well, I was going to lay some new laminate flooring in the study, and then in the hallway, and then in the attic, and then in the cellar, and then in the parlour. Oh, why are you doing all that then? It's because you burned my blinking house down. Later, I'm popping out for a bit. I'm off downtown. I was going to nip into St Mary's Hospital to see how Roland's doing. He's had a bit of a trauma. Again. And I'll take Duke for a walk as well. I might nip into the university. See if Daisy's got any new tomes. <laughs> then I'll probably swing by the graveyard. Pop some nice flowers on Sophie's grave. You know, the ex-Mrs Harrigan. Then I'll be back in time for tea. Oh no, you can't do that! Why not? Because they put in that new one-way system! Oh yeah, I forgot all about that. You all have to go through Arkham Woods! Oh, Jiminy Crickets. I always get lost and end up at that ritual site. And have to take the long way back. Always remember to go left instead of right. And don't stray off the main path. Whatever you do, then take the bridge to the university. While you're there, pop in the library. Get old Gandalf to open up a portal for you. Oh, I hate using those things. They're so non-Euclidean. Just follow the invisible arrows. Today on the Arkham Chronicle, we're going to be looking at these deluxe path markers, designed by Fluid Logic Studios and supplied courtesy of the Game Crafter. The Game Crafter was the world's first web to print game publishing company. It's a print on demand provider, but for games instead of books. Order from them like you would any other retailer, and they'll manufacture whatever you order there and then and ship it out. It comes in an extremely sturdy cardboard box like this, complete with brown paper packaging to make sure everything is secure and isn't moving about in transit, which is great if it's traveling internationally. Inside the box, let's take out the contents. We were lucky enough to receive all three sets, and each set is spread over three separate jiffy bags, all of which has the title and the code number written on by hand. And also in the box were the amazing stands. So let's take a closer look. Your first bag is going to contain the plinths that the cards sit on, the next is going to be your two-way connectors, and thirdly is going to be your single connectors. And don't forget these are double-sided, so you are getting two for one, and there's a little card in each pack that reminds you that these are laser cut. So there might be a little bit of burning around the edges which you can wipe off, and it's going to smell like an arsonist wardrobe for the first couple of days. So let's pop these open and have a closer look. These plinths are good to go straight out of the bag, but as you can see, they have been cut, and so you should just be able to pop them out of the background, except for the fact that you can't, because the cutting doesn't go all the way around. There are four points on here, where it is still joined to the backing, so you are going to have to get yourself a craft knife or something like that to basically trim these off and pop these out properly or you can just use them as is. We found that we were able to trim these down with a good pair of scissors without any kind of inconvenience. And it results in a nice straight edge, which is very smooth. No such problems with the connector pieces, however. These are cut all the way around and they will just punch out like any other board game style component. And the same with your one way markers, just give them a little pop from below like so and out they come. Both the connector pieces have gently rounded corners, because cosmic horror is all very well until little Johnny loses an eye. And this rounding means the corners are less likely to become damaged, particularly if you're storing them all together loose in a bag. Surprisingly, the large plinth pieces don't. Even after you pop them out of the backing, they still remain a sharp 90 degree corner. Ow, ow, ow. The colours are superb and vibrant, and you probably won't be able to see, but each of the tiles is very slightly different. You do get a better idea of this on the connectors. And as you can see, some have plants, some have rocks on them, some have nothing on them at all. You get 10 of these card plinths, which are designed to hold your locations, which is plenty to do most of the scenarios. You have nine of these connector cards, each of which has four connectors, and four times nine is plenty of connectors. And there's one sheet of eight One Direction markers for all your boy band needs. First up is the Grass and Wood set, which has a green, wild, undergrowth theme, on the reverse of which is wooden floorboards, like so. Next up is the Cobblestone Forest set, which has grey cobblestones, or flagstones on one side, 
and a forest or autumn scene on the other side, like so. And then we have the Dirt and Star set, which has got an earthy theme like a dried up riverbed, on the back of which is the yawning chasm of the cosmos itself, which is extremely Lovecraftian and perfect for the season finale of a certain cycle. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Be aware that this set is the one that suffers most with bleed, where the print doesn't go quite to the edges, which is why they are laser cut, because you can solve that problem just by popping them out like so. Like the box they came in, they are made of an extremely sturdy cardboard, not laser cut wood as you might imagine. They have a high gloss finish on both sides, which makes them look very attractive, but they will certainly show off your finger marks. You do need to be careful with them and treat them with respect, because it is possible to peel off the paper front if you are determined enough. And being cardboard, we don't need to tell you that they aren't going to react very well with water. So do be careful not to spill your beverages. Leave that to the professionals. This is how much room they take up. But this large placeholder area is great, because it means you can move the tokens off the cards. If you are partially sighted or do have a bit of trouble with the reading, then you can easily pick up the card, give it a bit of a scrutinise, and then pop it back without having to disturb all the tokens. Even with the maximum number of clues, it still doesn't get crowded, and they're also great for people who like to play with the miniatures. If you've got an uneven table surface because you like to play on planks of wood, then these can be a great way of bridging any gaps, getting over any humps. Each of these is 5 inches tall by 3 inches wide. So you are going to need some hefty real estate when it comes to table space. But for locations with straightforward connections, you can dispense with the middle parts and just butt them up together like so. As long as everyone is clear about what connects where. In fact, there's no reason why you can't pop them together in a grid like so, and then only separate out the locations which require connectors. A bit like that. You don't have to use the full width of a connector, you can always have a mini connection thus. Don't be afraid to switch the orientation around. And as long as it's clear where you can trace a clear joined up path from and to, you won't have any problems whatsoever. And they look great! You can tuck the connectors underneath the plinths, like you see in the example. But that does mean you've got to build up some supports all the way around the other sides so they don't get a bit wobbly. These look absolutely fantastic, so if you are doing some kind of demo or if you've got some friends coming over for their very first game, these will do a fantastic job of selling the game. And as you can see, they look a lot better than some of the things that we've been using before. Another cool thing about this product is that if you're familiar with the scenario, you can lay out the tiles for all of the locations ahead of time, even the ones which don't start in play. That way you can see exactly how much room your scenario is going to take up. And you don't have to stop and move people's drinks and tokens halfway through the scenario when extra locations come into play. The connectors aren't quite wide enough for you to slip enemies in between, however. But you can always play with them horizontally, and this will mean that there is always room to squeeze an enemy in. Oh joy! This was the configuration that we found that worked best for us. Tuck the location card into the corner with the clues running down the side and we had the investigate the miniatures with plenty of space at the top so they weren't obscuring the name or any of the location connectors. We used the path markers on the narrowest width like this so that if we did have to put in a one-way connector everything would be evenly spaced. One thing to bear in mind is that these are made of cardboard. So like your cards and your chaos tokens, eventually the sweat from your fingers will cause these to deteriorate. And so it's a shame there isn't any kind of protection that you can use to keep these safe. Apart from these BCW postcard sleeves, obviously, which are just the right size to fit them in even without trimming them off. And you can always use the mini American board game size that you use for your mini investigator cards to uh, keep the connectors safe as well. Fantastic, eh? Thanks to Tim at Fluid Logic Creations for letting us have all three of these sets. That was very kind of you, and we do appreciate your patience. I'm sorry it's taken so long. 
Ah, nuts. Knew we forgot something. Right, we'll have to make another video.